Hello, fam. We are back. Finally, as a book just fell on the floor with April's TVR video. We're going to pick that book back up and then we're going to get into this video. Okay, okay. Okay, fam. Like I said, we are doing late April's TBR. I am participating in the last minute readathon. I have the prompts on my notebook beside me. It's a BTS. I've heard of the band, but not technically the songs. But I liked the prompts that I had seen on the readathon. So, you know what? I decided to go ahead and jump on into them because like I said I like them and we're gonna give it a try and then I will also talk about the books I want to finish slash also start along with this month so yes we're gonna be doing a lot but we got this some I have an ebook for uh, audiobooks for and then some I'm going to be reading physically so without further ado we're going to be starting with the physically reading or actually I'm just gonna change that up uh, we're just gonna go with the prompts on here and I forgot a book I always forget a book Luckily, it wasn't too far from me. Okay, there's a lot of books here on my bed that I <laughs> don't really want to hold for the thumbnail, but there's a lot, and you will see here right now. Alright, for the first prompt for this readathon is read a book with a multiple point of views. And for that one, I am going to be going with Supernova by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in this series. I don't want to really want to give a synopsis for this because, like I said, it's the third one in the series and I don't want to spoil it myself with what happens between the two characters who both tell their point of view in the story, so we like that. So that's what I'm going with this one. So it is happening. I'm finishing the series and oh. I can't wait. I mean, I can, but, like, <laughs> usually I listen to the first two on audio, but I might either try to pick up the audiobook if I see it once I finish my other ones, and then jump right on into this, because the readathon is through the entire month, so I might wait it out a little bit, or just jump right on into it and read it physically. We don't know yet, but that's what we got. Alrighty. And then for prompts number two, read a book with more than one author. Now this one, I forgot to give her it again. I am going with the Maximum Ride manga because it is by James Patterson, but Nara Lee, I think, is telling the manga story version of it and I have yet to read the manga series of them and I am here for it so yes all right and then prompts number three read a book with a cover change now for this one if I can find it where'd it go I have so many books. Oh, okay. It's buried underneath some books. I am going with The Hunger Games by Susan Collins. Now, I know this recently had a cover change because of the 10 year edition or whatever it was for sure, but I know there are white covers of this now instead of the original cover, so we are going with The Hunger Games. Don't need to get too much detail into it. But just know it's following a girl named Katniss Everdeen who takes her little sister's place in the Hunger Games reaping 
ceremony. She doesn't want her little sister to go in and have her be killed. So she volunteers in her place and it's just her going through survival and what she has to do to keep her family alive and her friend that she's known for most of her life. So we're following that and she's trying to make new friends while she's there and she's not really good at making friends and she makes that very clear. But that's all I'm going to be giving up the synopsis for The Hunger Games because it has been around for a little while. This is definitely one of my favorite series because when the movie first came out, I saw it at least, well not at least, about 12 times before I owned it on DVD. That is the true fact. So if that doesn't tell you I like something, I don't know who I will, but obsessed. Alright, prompt number four, read a underhyped book. Now, for this one, I don't know if it was really popular when it first came out, but like I saw it and I really liked it, but it's been a little bit since I remember what it's about, but I love the cover of it and I haven't really heard anybody talk about it on booktube in a long time, or ever, really, but it is a region the Earth by A.C. Guahan. I'm not sure exactly how you'll say that, but it looks a really good. So, let's get the synopsis on this one. She is a daughter of the desert and she has magic in her blood. Okay, so far, that sounds right up my alley. Shalaz? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to say that name, I'm so sorry. People are desperate to end the devastating war that has, be, that has been raging for years with the adjo adjoining kingdom. <laughs> Words are hard, sorry guys. I'm willing to trade her freedom for the safety of her family, Sha Sheila, we'll just call her Sheila, agrees to an, an arranged marriage with the king of the bone lands, even though it means leaving behind everything she's ever known. In, in her strange new country, magic is outlawed, and the elements, those who can control earth, air, fire, and water are traitors. Subject to torture, or worse. Before she is even crowned, Sheila discovers that she can bend Earth to her will. Ooh. Trapped between her husband's irrational hatred of the elements and a dangerous rebellion led by her own brother, Sheila must harness her power and make an impossible choice. Save her family, save the elements, or save herself. Oh, that does sound really good. I don't know what it looks like. Naked. Nothing. Okay. Sometimes they have cool covers underneath the dust jacket. Not always, but it's fun when they do. Alright. Prompt number five. Read a backlist book. I looked at, I think I looked some of these up, but again, this is another book I haven't quite read, but I've had it on my shelves forever as well and that is Honor Among Thieves by Rachel Chain and Anne Acquire. But again I haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about this on booktube. It is an older book so we're rolling with it. <clears throat> Zara Cole has been in and out of New Detroit's rehab facilities for treatment of her antisocial behavior. There's no adjusting Zara's attitude, though. A painful past has made her stronger than most, which is why she chose a life in the zone instead of moving with her family to Mars. Okay. In her eyes, living inside a dome isn't much better than a prison cell. Still, when Zara commits a crime that has her running scared, jail might be exactly where she's headed. 
Instead, Zara is recruited into the honors an in light team of humans selected by the Leviathan, a race of silent alien ships to explore the outer reaches of the universe as their passengers. Okay, so it sounds like it's a little bit of a sci-fi. We like that. Zara seizes the chance to flee the Earth's dangers, but when she meets Nadium, the alien ship she's assigned to along with a fellow honor Beatrice, Zara starts to feel at home for the first time. Along with the devastation she's never experienced yeah, experienced before, yet nothing, not her honors training or her star street smarts could have prepared her for the dark, ominous truths that lurk behind the alluring glittery glitter of the starlight. Oh, that also uh, sounds super good, right up my alley, between aliens and science fiction. Oh, we love that. Okay. Prompt number five. Read a... Oh, sorry. Wrong one. Prompt number six. Read a thriller book. Now, since I have quite a few thrillers... Bye. I am going to go with the second book in the series to The Shining, which is Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. All we know about this one is that it follows Danny years later as he's an adult, and that's all I really want to know for right now, because I know there's a movie out, I haven't seen it, but I have it, but that's all I really know is that Danny is no longer a kid, but he still has The Shining. And that's all I want to know. So we're going to leave it off at that. So moving on to prompt number seven. I'll direct down the same thing twice. Read a book with the bird on the cover. Oh, okay. I didn't write it down twice. And for this one, I am doubling up on some of the prompts. So that's why I see this book on there again. Okay. Read a book with with the bird on the cover, which I keep saying, and for this one I am going with the Hunger Games again because Mockingjay, it's a bird, it is on the cover, so yes. Okay, prompt number eight, a read a band book. Now this one I'm also doubling up on the prompts and I'm listening to it now, and that is the fourth Harry Potter book. The Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling, and this is also one of the books I wanted to read for this month because since it's book four and we're into April, so I'm trying to read them as the months go by if I can, so it's going to be a fun time. So we all know about Harry Potter and the fourth one, like I read this like years ago, but I got like halfway through it, and then I saw the movie, and then I never finished the book. So we're going to be trying to finishing the books, and I'll, this is my goal for today, is try to finish Harry Potter number four. And see how well I like the movie, but we'll see how well I like the book. Alright, prompt number nine. Read a book that won't take up much time. Now for that, I picked up a Cassandra Clare book, because I just finished Chain of Gold, and I have yet to read this one which is the Red Scrolls of Magic, and uh, oh, all I know is that it's a tale between Alec Lightwood and Magnus Bain and about uh, their relationship, and they go on a vacation, and that's all I really want to know. Magnus and Alec, oh, I ship them. They're precious. And we really need to read this one because you know I, I just love hearing their stories and other different books that they're in and it's just yes please sign me the heck up okay prompt number 10 read a hyped book now for me I started a little ways into this book I haven't finished it but I really really need to because it's the third book in the series, and that is 
Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, and I know I was supposed to read it like a long while ago, I haven't been in and out of other books though, but your girl really needs to get a, a move on on the Dark Dawn because I want to know what happens to Mia, to her little brother, and just, oh, everything. So, we have that. <laughs> Alright, and prompt number 11, read your most anticipated book. Now, I don't know if you remember my 20 books I wanted to read for 2020, I'm pretty sure that's out, but if it's not, I believe it is, but I did have Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo in there, this is the second book to Shadow and Bone that I read last year, and never got around to picking up the second book. Mm, your girl needs to because mm, I like it and I did start a little ways into this one as well I'm only up to page 8 so far so I will get a move on to this one very shortly but no it's on my list right, set it aside since we're reading it <laughs> alright prompt number 12 read a book that you DNF'd previously now for me that was the uh, paperback version of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I tried to get halfway into that book. I liked the show, but the book I had a little bit of issues with because when there were dark pages, there was like white writing on it and it was kind of like difficult for me to like read it and to like understand it. So I am going with the comic book version of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. This is book one and I the artwork in it is just completely gorgeous and I'm hoping I can get into this more than the book that I tried. So yes. Alright, Sabrina the Teenage Witch as you've never seen her before. A comic book horror masterpiece from two creators at the top of their game, collected for the first time. On the eve of her 16th birthday, young sorceress Sabrina Spellman finds herself at a crossroads, cross huh, forced to choose between an unearthly destiny and her own mortal boyfriend Harvey. But Madame Sa Satan a deadly foe from her family's past has arrived in Greendale, and she has sights set squarely on the young witch. Can Sabrina face the challenge, or will her witching career and high school life end all too abruptly? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I remember watching the original Sabrina the Teenage Witch series, or series, the TV show. I loved it. And I loved Salem, and then years later, a reboot. I watched a few of it on Netflix. I didn't finish the season, but I really need to, because I remember liking it, but the book kind of fell flat, so hopefully the comic book is a win for me, and I've been wanting to try it, I just put it off, so here we are. <clears throat> Alright, so prompt number 13. Read a book with numbers in the title. Now for this one I am definitely going to be trying to finish Seven Blades in Black by Sam Skies. I've talked a little bit about this already before on my channel so I am not going to give a synopsis for this one because like I said you guys have been hearing me talking a lot about this in my weekly or weekly my weekend reading vlogs and one of my videos of me already explaining Seven Blades in Black, but just know uh, I do really like the main character Sal and I really want to finish on what happens to her because I left off on chapter 15 in this and it just needs to happen. That is it. Alright. Now, for prompts number 14, I read a child, child favorite. And for that, Again, I am going to be going with Harry Potter number four, even though I said before I like got halfway through and then it's all the movie, but I was young when I started this and I liked it, and like throughout the whole series, we've 
in middle school, one of my teachers was obsessed with Harry Potter, so that's where Harry originally came into my life, and, you know, I liked it way back when, so, we're counting it, it's happening, it is happening, <laughs> alrighty, for prompt number 15, I read a book with a bromance, now, the only one I could find with this one that I haven't read yet is What If It's Us by Becky Alitali and Adam Silvera. I've read Becky Alitali's book, but not Adam Silvilla. Silvilla. Why is that name hard to pronounce? <laughs> but I have, like I said, What If It's Us, and I just... I'm going to read the back because I like the back part because I don't want to see what's on the inside so I don't want to spoil myself, so the back part. Arthur, I believe in love at first sight, fate, the universe, all of it, but not how you're thinking. I don't mean it in our souls, we're split and you're the other half forever and ever sort of way. I just think you're meant to meet some people. I think the universe nudges them into your path. Ben, this is a New York, so post office Arthur won't pop up into my life again. I guess that's fine. It's not like something could have really happened between us. Thanks for nothing, universe. That sounds really good and really cute. I can't wait to dive in. All right. Prop 16, read a sci-fi book. I guess we're having more than one sci-fi book on this TBR. It's cool. We love it. And for that one, I am listening to the audiobook of Sleeping Giants by Sylvian Novell. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, but we do try. Alright. A girl named Rose is riding her new bike near home in Deadwood, South Dakota. When she falls through the earth and into the palm of a giant metal hand, 17 years later, the mystery of the bizarre artifact remains unsolved. Its origins, art artifacts, and purpose unknown. Rose Franklin now is now a highly trained physicist and leads a top secret team determined to crack the hand's code. While powerful forces with uncertain motives close in demanding answers about the relic and what it portends for humanity. But once the pieces of the puzzles are in place, will the results prove to be an uninstrument of lasting peace or a weapon of mass destruction? Now I've heard nothing but good things about Sleeping Giants, so I'm excited to get into the audiobook of this one uh, very very soon when i say very soon i'm saying after harry potter sleeping giants those are my goals in life if you wondered <laughs> all right prop number 17 read a favorite author and for that one since you can double up where did he go Really? It was just here. It's underneath my... <laughs> and for that one, again, I am going with uh, Jay Kristoff and Dark Dawn because... Just because I like Jay's Nevernight series and I, I I just need to finish Dark Dawn. I just need to do it. Push me towards it. Alright. And then Prop 18. Read a five star prediction. Now for that, I need to read a little ways more into this book, but it is All Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. It is a Little Mermaid retelling. I've read the first two chapters. I need to read, like I said, a little bit more into it without dropping the book. But I remember liking it a little ways into it. But I just need to finish the whole thing, and I'm predicting it in a five-star read, we hope. So, uh, I will let you know when I know. So, there's that. Alright, so prop 19. 
read a 2020 release and for this one I've also started with a little ways into and I like it I just need to finish the rest of it and that is a wicked as you wish by Ren I'm not gonna even try to say her last name but she is the author of the bone witch series and I loved the first book need to finish the other two eventually but I do want to read the rest of this and oh, it just sounds so good and I need more all right and then 20 the very last a prompt read a book outside your comfort zone now this one I am also buddy reading this with Brooke and I have it on my Kindle so that's why I got my Kindle out and that is oh go back the the birthright book by Kate Tierman it's just oh yes please I'm trying to see if it has a, a no it doesn't but this is the Kindle edition of this book and I'm excited to read it I don't know too much about it but it just it sounds right up my alley and I'm excited to read it so we got this book <laughs> all right and that is all the prompts for the bangathon TBR that I am doing and then after this I will talk about the books that I want to read beyond that so I'll end this video here because it's already super long and so I will jump into the rest of April's TBR video so stay tuned and there goes the light okay fam welcome back to the rest of my April's TBR that uh some of these I want to finish some of these I really want to start reading so, let's go with the ones that I really want to start reading. And the first one is The Wolf by Leo Caru, and it just sounds really good, and I like that. So, let's get into this. War, Revelry, Revelry, something like that, and Honor in a World Where the Fierce enemies are always closer than they seem. Beyond the Black River, among the forests and mountains of the north, lives an ancient race of people. Their lives are measured in centuries, not decades. They reveal in wilderness and resistance, and they scorn wealth and comfort. By contrast, those in the south live in the moment. Their lives more fleeting. They crave wealth and power. Their ambition is limitless. And their cunning unmatched. When the armies of the South flood across the Black River, the fragile peace between the two races is shattered. One on a lightning struck battlefield, two sides will fight for their people, for their land. For their very survival. Now that, my friends, sound super good. Alright, then of course I've also been talking about this book on my channel a lot lately. And that is Cans of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. I'm not too far into it. I would like to be... Oh, when I have one of my pages, I'm so sorry, Paige. So sorry. I am up to chapter 7, which is on page 53. I, like I said, I would love to get more into this so I can start Bloody Rose. And I just found out there's a third book that comes out, I think, like, potentially next year. So I definitely want to get into this and then the second one. So I am prepared for that book. So we love that. We love trying on this channel. And another book I want to get more into, which I also started a reading vlog for, so I will try to edit that as much as I can because it's going to be a spoil 
video, which I did mention, but that is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass, also known as Crescent Steady. And so far, from what I've read into this, it is really good. And I can't wait to read more into it. I'm not going to give synopsis about it because I have talked about it already a little bit on this channel and it's everywhere right now in the world so mm, you're really going to say much about it but just know there's a vlog on it that I'm going to be trying to working on this month if we can get more into it so hey like that all right and then this other book that I got on a whim because a the cover looks really cool and like I love the feeling of it I'm one of those weird people but well, let's go all right and this book is the shadow of what was lost by James Illustein and all we really know about this one is as destiny calls a journey begins it has been 20 years since the godlike uggers were overthrown and killed those who once served them the gifted were spared only after accepting the relevance of four tents, which vastly limited their powers. Davian suffers the consequences of a war loss before he was even born. When he discovers that he wields the forbidden power of the Uggers, he sets into motion a chain of events. That will change everything. To the west, a young man whose fate is intertwined with Davian's wakes up in a forest covered in blood with no memory of who he is. And in the far north, an ancient enemy begins to stir. Uh, that sounds really good, and yes, this is one of those big chunky books, but I have the first one, and... I have the second one. And hold on, my phone is ringing. Okay fam, sorry I've been up a little late to try to finish the rest of my April's uh, TBR video. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the rest of the books I would also like to try to get into. It's another fun little stack, so let's keep going. The other one that I am going to try to listen to is I have the audiobook for this one, so audiobooks definitely help in my favor, and it is of Curses and Kisses by Sandia Menon. She's the author of When Dimple Met Reshi, and I really like that book. I haven't finished the rest of that series, but I own them. But I do want to give uh, this one a try just because it sounds super cute and oh, we love it. Will the princess save the beast? Just outside of Aspen, Colorado, nest nestled between the Central Mountains and an ink blot lake lies State Rosetta's Academy. Its sweep inspires creeping ivy and time worn brick. Tourists would be Princess Jaya Rosa's home for the next year. While she's there, Jaya had one mission, break an English nobleman's heart, but first, she had to fall in love with him. Like, mm, that sounds really good, and it's springtime, so, you know, spring, spring break, romances, we all about that. So we're going to set that one down. And I would also like to get into this one because I've read one, two, haven't got around to three yet, but it's been a little while, so hopefully it can still, it can like refresh my memory about it. But that is the third book to the Fallen series by Lauren Kate, and this is Passion. Like I said, it's a been a long time since I've read about Lucy's world, about where she falls in love with Danielle, who is an angel and that she is not, but she like kept really reliving her lives and that she can remember those lives with Danielle until she's like reborn again and he's still there, hopelessly waiting to see if she will turn up or not. And 
Surprise, surprise, she does! But that's all I want to say about the Fallen series, because like I said, I'm now just picking up the third book, and I don't want to give too much detail more than that, because like I said, it's been a while, and I don't want to be surprised. All I know is that it's about a girl named Lucy, like I said, who falls in love with this angel guy named Daniel, and she knows that she was meant for him and nobody else, but mm, people do try, let me tell you. But that's all you really need to know about Fallen, and there is a movie, I've seen the movie, and then later did I discover, it's like, is that a book that I have? Surely not. It was. So I had to read the book after, and mm, I liked the movie a lot. But that's just me. I don't know about anybody else, but I liked the Fallen movie. <laughs> anyway, from there, since we're on the kick of a little bit of a romance theme going on there, I'm going to top it off with The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. This will be a second book of hers that I've read, because I've read Lucky and Loved and kind of likes that, so we're going to continue on, like I said, with The Fill-In Boyfriend. I talked a little bit about this in my spring reading TBR, so if you haven't seen that, then you won't know what this is about. Basically, it's kind of like, um... A fake a dating relationship trope so that's all I'm gonna say about this one because that's basically all it is from the description she gets dumped by her boyfriend and then she needs another guy who they like pretend to fake date because his ex-girlfriend you know dumped him as well so and he wants to make her jealous, she wants to make her ex-boyfriend jealous so they can take them back, but like somewhere in the middle I think they actually do fall for each other, and that's all I want to know about that. So that's all we're saying. Sorry it wasn't the best description, but that's what I got out of it, so. Alright, so the next book I really want to read, I've had on my TBR forever, I got it for Christmas like maybe two, three years ago. <laughs> Have I read it? No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to be reading it hopefully this month, if not this month, next month. We're going to try for this month. And that is Far From The Tree by Robin Benway. Alright. This one I will give a description on. But it sounds really cool. Like it's. It's just what I think. Beginning in the middle, or being the middle child has its ups and downs. But for Grace, an only child who was adopted at birth, discovering that she is a middle child is a different ride altogether. After getting pregnant at 16 and putting her own baby up for adoption, she goes looking for her biological family and finds an older brother and a younger sister. But she struggles to find a balance between her contagious joy at discovering two brand new family members and the gaping loneliness that lingers in the space her daughter once held. Maya, her loud mouthed younger bio sister, has a lot to say about their newfound family ties. Having grown up in the snarky brunette in a house full of chipper redheads, she's quick to search for traces of herself among these not so quite strangers. When she when her adopted family family's long buried problems began to explode to the surface, Maya can't help but wonder where exactly it is she belongs. Jocelyn. Their sodic older big brother has no interest in bonding over their shared loss of a biological mother. After all, he is the only one of the three who was never adopted, and 17 years in the foster care system have taught him his secrets and fears are best kept close to the vest, tied to his chest though, where they can't hurt anyone but him. Now, like I said, that kind of sounds really good. Not, like I said, I've had it forever on my TBR, I'm just trying to tackle half of my TBR down instead of up let's try to go down but right now it's up there but we're trying to like i said get it down 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 all right 
Now this one I know I gave a description for like back in December, but I haven't really finished this book. I'm like part way into it. And that is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. And this is the third book in the series where we're following Pharaoh, where she has to go back into Tamlin's court. And she's trying to help Bryce Sand. And that's all I really want to know. But I can't explain the, what's on the back. Because sometimes I like looking on the back if there's something instead of in the front. So it's not like spoilish. You know what I mean? Alright, the painting was a lie, a bright, pretty lie, bursting with pale pink blossoms and a fat beams of sunshine. I'd begun it yesterday, an idle study of the roses garden lurking beyond the open windows of the studio. Through the tangle of thorns and the sanity, leaves the brighter green of the hills rolled away into the distance. In crescent, re unrelenting spring. If I painted the glimpse into the court of the way my gut had earned me, it would have been flesh shredding thorns, flowers that choked off the sunlight for any plant smaller than them, and a rolling hills stained red. But each brush stroke on the wide canvases was calculated each dab and swirl of bleeding colors meant to portray not just athletic spring but a sunny disposition as well not too happy but not too gladly finally heading finally healing from horrors i carefully divulged i suppose in that in the past weeks i had crafted my demeanor as incorrectly as one of these paintings. I suppose that if I had also chosen to show myself as I truly wish, I would have been honored with the flesh shredding Italians and hands that chokes the life out of those now in my company. I would have left the glided halls stained red, but not yet. Pharaoh, girl, what you doing? Okay, that is that one. And then this next book I've also started halfway into, but I would like to like finish the rest of it because it was really good when I started it. And that is Skype by Neil Shusherman. Okay, welcome back to the rest of April's late TBR video. I kind of got cut off with a little bit. Sorry, adjusting. There we go. Maybe it was still too close. There we go. Are we still too close? We're still too close. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Playing with the camera, getting used to it still. Uh, and then. Alright, as I was saying before I got cut off in the last part of the video, I was talking about Scythe and how I've gotten a little ways into it before, but we're going to try and work on it sometime this month, don't know when, but hopefully, if not this month, definitely next month. Alright, we're going to put that back. And then I was talking about a review or, well, not a review, but the description for Far From the Tree, which I got a couple Christmases ago, or maybe three Christmases ago. It's been a little bit. It was either for Christmas or my birthday, but I'm thinking Christmas. Either way, it's been on my TBR forever, and I really just want to get around to reading it. It sounds super good. It follows three different people who were adopted and one who was not adopted. So, let me give you a description of what it, it's about. Being the middle child has its ups and downs, but for Grace, an only child who was adopted at birth, discovering that she is a middle child is a different ride altogether. After getting pregnant at 16 and putting her own baby up for adoption, 
She goes looking for her biological family and finds an older brother and a younger sister, but she struggles to find the balance between her cautious joy at discovering two brand new family members and the gaping loneliness that lingers in the space her daughter once held. Maya. Her loudmouth younger bio sister has a lot to say about their newfound family ties. Having grown up in a in the snarky brunette in a house full of chipper redheads, she's quick to search for traces of herself among these not quite strangers. When her adopted family long buried problems begin to explode to the surface, Maya can't help but wonder where exactly it is she belongs. Jaquin, their static older brother, has no interest in bonding over their shared loss of a biological mother. After all, he is the only one of the three who was never adopted, and 17 years in the foster care system have taught him his secrets and fears are best kept close to the vest tight to his chest where the where the they can't hurt anyone but him and that sounds really good and this is by robin benway and like i said i've had it forever i just really need to get around to reading it and then if i get to these other three books as well i would also like to get into Heartstopper, Volume 1 by Alice Oseman, All We Know Is Boy Meets Boy, and this is all it's telling me. Boy Meets Boy, Boy Becomes Friends, Boys Fall In Love, and I've heard nothing but good things about this comic book, and it's a three book series, and I need to read the first one so I can get the other two, and hopefully I like it, and I should fly through it since it is. A graphic novel and we like graphic novels on this channel so a for that I'm putting that back down there <clears throat> and like I said if I also get around to the last two books on this TBR hopefully is the merciful crow by Margaret by Margaret Owen and the book itself is just a gorgeous in the end pages have a map. We like maps. At least I do. Alright, let's give a description on the Merciful Crow. A future chef tain, a fugitive prince, a too cunning boy guard, and a one grumpy gray tabby. I'm not sure what a tabby is. Fi upsides by one rule. Look after your own. As the future Chaitain of a of a shunned castle of mercenary killers, she lies on her wits and bone, magic drawn from the teeth of the dead witches to protect her band. The crows take more abuse than coin, so when they are called to collect the royal dead, Fai hopes they'll find the pain out of a lifetime. When Fai discovers that Crown Prince Jesmir and his crafty bodyguard Tavern, or Taven, have faced their deaths to escape the ruthless queen Rushana, she is ready to cut her losses and perhaps their throats. But Jazz offers a deal that she can't refuse. Make sure he lives to see the throne, and he'll protect the crows when he regimes. To outrun and outwit the queen, the trio forge an uneasy alliance that is soon tested by old secrets, shifting allegiances, and forbidden feelings. As Roshina and her band of deadly trackers loom ever closer, the three fugitives must discover what they're each willing to sacrifice to save their own. That sounds really good. I'm not sure how I feel about the crow part, but like it sounds good. So hoping we can get to it this month or sooner. Go back in there. 
Alright, and this last book I want to talk about, I also had on my TBR for a little while, and I uh, painted the pages of it on my own. The color, I can't remember if it was the Fairy Loot or Allocrate that did the spray edges of it on this color, but I matched it pretty well. It just the paint got a little bit everywhere on it, but on the inside of the book, so that's okay. We tried. But that is The Crown of Feathers by Nikia Paparuto, she thinks. <laughs> but it is this a gorgeous cover and these edges that I painted. Oh, I'm so happy. I am a daughter of death from the ashes I rose, like a phoenix from the prior. And that's all I really want to know. All I know is that she's a phoenix writer. And she has a sister, but like I said, that's all I really want to know about this in case if I don't get to it this month, but next month. But just know I definitely want to give a Crown of Feathers a try because I do have the second book, which is Heart of Fe Heart of Flames Feathers. <sighs> anyway. There you guys have it. This is my very late April's TBR. I don't know if I will get to all these books. I don't even count them this time because for the first half there's like 20 books that I'm reading for the readathon that I'm participating in. I'm almost done with one of the books so yay. We love that. So here's to hoping that I get through all of them. Don't know but we're definitely going to try our best like we always do. So, uh, that's uh, that. <laughs> and hopefully you guys like this video, and if you're new here, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the like bell if you like the video. Hit the notification, all the fun goods down there. And I will see you guys in my new video soon. Hopefully when it comes to next month, I will already have a video out for what I want to read in May, and May also happens to be my birthday month, so we're going to have a fun read next month, and I want to do a cram -a -thong reading session at the end of May because I have some days off towards my birthday, like I always do, so we're going to switch it up, do something fun since Corona is going around, can't go anywhere, but you can go somewhere in your book world, so we're going to do that. Alright, you guys, I will catch you later. Alright, alright. Bye fam.